Welcome everybody to another session in our Women Lead Online Forums brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Patty Vargas, I'm your host today, and today we have a subject matter expert in the hot seat who is actually willing to say, yeah, go ahead and ask me anything, you can't scare me. Now our session today lasts for about an hour, and if you've joined with video, you'll be able to see our guests and the attendees alike. Questions and comments are always welcome, and if you have something you'd like to contribute anonymously, just put it in the chat to me and I will share it for you. Now our topic today is everything related to the 2020 census and how that affects us all individually as well as affects us from a business standpoint. And I'm really excited to introduce today's subject matter expert, Isabel Lemos. Now let me tell you a little bit about her. Um, Elizabeth or Isabel is originally from Cuba and you will pick up a bit of an accent as you listen and she's been in the United States since 2012. She is a partnership specialist with the U.S. Census Bureau and in that role she collaborates with census partners planning, developing, managing the partnership agreements and coordinating with them throughout the entire census time frame. So she's here with us today to share some of the lesser known facts about the census and answer any questions that we might have and feel free to just ask them as we go. This is designed to be a conversation. So welcome Isabel and tell us a little bit more about you and, and what, uh, what makes you so fascinating and interesting. Hi, Patty. Thank you so much. That was a wonderful uh, introduction. I really appreciate it. And then, as you mentioned, yes, um, I was uh, born and raised in Cuba. Um, before coming to the United States, I moved to Spain, where I lived for almost uh, six years. And then in 2000, I, I went there to study. And then in 2012, I decided to move uh, to the United States. Uh, when I arrived here, I had a background in education. I was um, related to uh, nonprofit organizations, so I was working with DACA at that time mm -hmm. in the Hispanic sector, and then I decided to go on my own. I had a small uh, business for uh, Hispanic students. It was an online project until well, I became a mom, and then I decided to, to leave the mom uh, work for some years, and I was lucky to um, uh, be in the census, uh, to be uh, related to the census next year. Mm -hmm. So last year, sorry. I joined the US Census Bureau last year, as you mentioned, as a partnership specialist. And that's what I do. My function is to encourage and educate uh, businesses uh, with uh, everything that is related to the census. And also to let them know how beneficial can the census be for they are growing. So when you want to, um, to focus where you're going to uh, the target of those clients that you're going to have, that information is on the census. Mm -hmm. If you're going to work with any specific community, the census is the, the, the biggest database that collects all of that information. So that's why it's so important that we all participate in the census. Mm -hmm. For big corporations, sometimes they want to know where is that skill force located, where they're going to be placing their, their headquarters. So they go to the census. In times like this, for example, with all of these health crises, for the emergency funds, we know like uh, seniors are one of the most uh, sensitive community. Mm -hmm. So what the government does, they go to the census, they see what are those senior communities located, which languages that they speak, so they can allocate uh, sources to those communities and specific uh, areas. And one of the two biggest benefits of the census, I would like to say, is power and money. Mm. The census counts is used for allocation and distribution. Allocation is the representative we are going to have in the White House. And um, for California, uh, this is why we are working so uh, strongly, because we are meant to lose one seat in the White House. So for the first time, we are can't, if we don't conduct um, a proper and accurate census, we might lose a seat in the White House, because we know so many people have been leaving the state, right? For many reasons. So that is going to be reflected in the census, and that's going to be reflected in the numbers representative that represent the state. Okay, um, wait a minute. You have to stop right there. I need to make sure I understand that because my ears just perked up. So 
the d d counting the amount of people that we have in California, you know, I realized that that tied to how many representatives we have in the Senate and in, in, um, in Congress. So that is a concern this year that they're actually talking about reducing us because so many people have left the state. Yes, yes. The, the statistic says that we are, we may lose between one and two seats. That's the expectation. So that's why more than ever, we need to participate in the census because there are people that have been leaving, right? Th those ones have left already. But if on top of that, we have a percentage of the population that do not participate in the census, that's going to affect our numbers as well. I would like to say like as, as yesterday, 60, 61% of the population nationwide has responded to the census, which is, which is great. Take into consideration that census is no priority right now, honestly. Mm -hmm. So people are, they lost the, their jobs, they, they, the pandemic around. So they have been responding to the census and we are really glad with that. California is about, about that. California, um, as, as yesterday, self-response has been 62.8. Um, so we are, we are um, kind of um, happy with those numbers, but we need to still uh, work on having the most of the community responding to the census, because as I said, that can affect that political representations that we are going to have. And also the distribution of federal funds. There is more than $675 billion every year distributed for federal programs. And that distribution comes out of the uh, census counts. For every person that is not counted in California, we lose around $2,000 per year for the next 10 years. So we are talking that is uh, like a big uh, amount of money. So, and then can be like a cash 22, right? We had the sample like last census 2010 in and children on the five, there were 2 million children on the five that were not counted in the country, in the whole country. As a result of that, just in LA County, they lost $500 million for programs like Head Start, programs that are designed to provide services to children on the five. And they lost that amount of money for 10 years. Wow. So we are talking like when we, when we conducted this count, and we say we are going to submit that information to uh, the president and to the government, then, and they allocate that money to us, that's going to be the money that's going to be allocated for the next 10 years, for public schools, for senior, um, for medical, for senior centers, um, for businesses, uh, the small business administration, they get uh, their money, they get part of the money that they get is based on that count for the Pell Grant, for college, so more than 130 federal funding programs get their money based on that count. So that's why it's so important that we all participate. And we count everyone. I would like to say, we are working- uh, Sorry, I, I just, I didn't hear that number. Over 130. Say that again? You said something, over 130 something. We, we, we lost, for every person that is not counted, to the census, we lose, uh, nineteen fifty dollar per person, almost two thousand. But yeah, the government, the government distrib distributes three hundred and seventy five billion dollars. Yeah, but you just said one hundred and thirty something a while ago. What was that number for? Oh, no, sorry. Maybe I didn't hear right. Yes. <laughs> okay, That's sorry. Like, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Oh, right. more than just says, sorry, more than one hundred and thirty federal uh, funding programs. Uh, oh, okay. their money based on census statistic. Okay, so thanks. I mentioned some of them, like uh, public schools, uh, medical, uh, mm -hmm. Medicaid, sorry, Medicaid, um, the Pell Grant for uh, colleges, mm -hmm. those students mm -hmm. that get the grant, they get uh, for Title VIII, for housing, the Small Business Administration, so for the, um, the Department of Transportation, the those agencies that work with transportation, they get their money based on census statistics. Mm -hmm. right. So that's why it's so important to encourage and participate. Uh, another important thing about the census is that like, uh, we count everyone. That's a big difference between census and voting. People are confused sometimes 
So I, 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 know, I do not participate because I am not a citizen. You don't need to be a citizen to respond to the census. We are going to be counting everyone, undocumented, resident, uh, citizens that are born in the country. We are going to be counting newborns until um, there is no limit to participate in the census. We got a, a call uh, on Monday was someone that was calling us was a senior lady and she was a hundred year a hundred years old. <laughs> she wanted support to participate in the census. And we were so glad about that. Like yes, of course, uh, we can help you. So that's another thing that is important to clarify. The citizenship question is not included in the questionnaire. The questionnaire is going to ask basic things like your name, your data spur, your um, your address the number of people that live in the household, because that's what we care about. Census care about uh, the number of people that live in the household, and we can share that information with any other agency. It's important to know like every person that is related to the census, every census worker, we uh, sworn an oath that we can share that information for life. Not even after we are done with the census and we move to another agency or to any other company, we can share that information. If we fail on doing that, we can go to prison for up to five years or we pay a fine of uh, $250,000. Uh, so wow. that's information that uh, is not shareable. Uh, also, it's important to know that when we collect that information, uh, as I said, we are going to be also asking for the race, the ethnicity, uh, that information, when we uh, provide, especially in California, we're working in providing just numbers to the government. So we will keep that information and that information is going to be released as, as a protocol the census has. The information is released 72 years later. So at that time, and for those people that like uh, genealogy, those people that want to know where did they come from, they go to the census and they are able to track their family history, that's another benefit of the census. And it's free, wow. you go there and it's free. You go to the census, so now the information that is released is information related to the 1940s. So you can go and you can see the name of your grandma, so the name and the address, so because that is the amount of time that we dedicate to have to, to, the, to let that information public. So far you can go to the census database and then you can see the amount of I don't know, let's say Asian people that are living in San Diego, right? But no, we are not going to be disclosing any other information. And then that's important to remark because sometimes people we work with communities that they have kind of uh, um, sensi uh, sensitive to government uh, activities and no, I'm not going to participate because my information can be shared with any mm -hmm. other agency. And so that's important for them to know that we can share that information by law. And also it's important to know that the census is mandated. It's in the constitution. The first census was taken in the 18th century. And we, is, the constitution says that we have to count everyone that is living in the country. So that's what we do. So um, when, you, when you take, uh, when the census has all of this data, um, if I understood you right, it, you basically, you share numerical data or you share aggregate data. You don't <laughs> share, um, Nancy lives over here type no. of thing. It's just, no. okay. okay. We are not going to share the name. We are not going to share the race. We are not going to, sh to, to share data space, uh, data, uh, data space, sorry. That's going to be shared 72 years later. However, I want to add a couple of things to that because um, one of my previous career path, I was in, at CETA sign, I'm, I'm responsible for public health there. And, um, we had uh, collaborative with other different hospitals and entities. And because it's public health, which was really great, we're able to do like community, um, what they used to call it again, needs assessment. And so when you map out a community, you can actually get the demographics from the Census Bureau on age population, ethnicity, Sometimes I don't know if they have income level or what, but you know, we really were able to use that information in planning programs relevant to the community that we've identified as our target community and, and surrounding communities and where the needs are and address them specifically based upon ethnicity and geography and age 
the older population, we know this is community, this generic is a geriatric population versus the, you know, it was really, very helpful. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, so it, I have a question in reference to the census, and it's interesting. I think you, I don't think you'll be sensitive to this because both of us are foreigners. <laughs> I'm, I'm from the Caribbean. Uh, the reason I'm asking this, however, is because I know it's quite sensitive to provide as a foreigner, and I've already done the census, no problem. I'm a, I'm a citizen. So anyhow, um, because it's so sensitive as a foreigner giving information, I guess, whether you're here legally or not, how, are, how is the Census Bureau and other entities actually being able to reassure individuals who have some concerns in regards to them being here, whether they've overstayed their time or, or they, they, the parents are came illegally, but the kids were born here. How is that being handled? How are you guys handling that to make sure that people really are comfortable giving the data out, giving the information out? Well, first of all, thank you for the question. And we have been working uh, actively with civic groups that yeah. work with those kind of communities to yeah. let them know what to educate them about the census, what the census is about, um, what the census is going to be asking. We show them the questionnaire, the questions. Uh, we uh, let them know about our confidentiality protocol, that we can share the information, how is the, the information collected. Once you respond to the census online, if you respond online, that's going to be encrypted, and that can go to any other uh, share with any other agency. And mm -hmm. so we, we work actively educating all of those communities. We have partnership specialists like me that are active in the, for example, the Hispanic community. We have uh, different partnership uh, specialists that they are uh, active and trustee voices in those communities that may feel that uh, fear, right? That fear of not participating or is putting their information outside. So we may, we let them know that this is for everyone. There is anything here related. We don't have, there is no any question related to your immigration status. Mm -hmm. We're not going even to ask you for your social security. I know, it's, it's very, very benign. It's obviously very effective, but it's benign. The questions are benign, you know. You know, I actually, uh, I'm a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha, <clears throat> excuse me, which is a professional um, African-American uh, organization. They're all, you know, professional women was actually made in Howard University and over 100 years old. And one of the things that we, we, we really are involved with the community, different programs. And so I know one of the focuses that we have right now is actually seeing how we can help the, a community, whatever that is, a community really engage themselves in doing, getting involved with the census. My question is, what, what's the deadline for the census? Okay, um, the deadline, uh, since we also have been impacted by COVID-19, the right. thing was supposed to end in July 31st. So right. now we move, it, we move it until October 31st. Okay, uh, all right. We are taking a uh, different initiative to continue with that um, uh, response to the census. We have created, I don't know if you're here in San Diego, but in the case of San Diego, we created uh -huh. a local line because, uh, one of the approach the census has for this year was to provide different channels to participate to the census. Many people are just used to the paper form, but for yeah. the first time, we are going to be able to take the census online, over the mm -hmm. phone, with the paper, and then we're going to be sending the numerators. So the numerators, those ones that go to the house and knock on your door, those are going to be going out in August 11th. But we are actively encouraging the community residents to use the other channels, especially with this pandemic. This right. Uh, even with seniors, we get that idea of the phone, the local phone line here in San Diego for those seniors that they are sometimes they are so used to the paper phone, but now they can go out and go to the post office and return that paper form. So they can call us to our offices. We have three offices here in San Diego. There is also a national uh, nationwide call center that uh, we provide another uh, great initiative uh, to be the census more accessible to the community. It's like a, this census form is available in 12 languages. 13 is we uh, include English. So it's available in English, Spanish, Tagalog, Vietnamese, uh, Japanese, Portuguese, uh, Haiti Creole, 
uh, from Haiti. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of Asian, uh, Mandarin, is also available in Mandarin. So there are 12 languages that the census is available. So when you go to the call center, to the, um, to the nationwide call center, you are going to be calling, if you want to respond in Portuguese, you're going to have a number in Portuguese. So that person that's going to be behind the phone, when he say hi, is going to say hi in Portuguese. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be able to understand. In the case of San Diego, we are actively working in recruiting more assistants that are able to speak those languages. So far, the line uh, is going to be providing uh, census questionnaire assistance in uh, English, Spanish, and Tagalog. Because we used to have those census questionnaires in the libraries, right? Mm -hmm. People used to go to the library and get that support, but now the libraries are closed. So we have to create new uh, initiatives um, uh, to make that uh, participation to happen. As I was commenting before, uh, as of yesterday, nationwide response to the census has been in the 61%. California uh, number is about, above that. California is in 62.8%, which we are really happy. Uh, with the position, but we still need, right? Our goal is to get before August, before we send the numerators out to knock on the door, our goal is to get to reach that 70% mm -hmm. of self response. Right, so you're just looking for a small gap of, of folks. Yeah, I was curious with um, with COVID right now, if you if they would still be sending people door to door, so. I think that's a yeah. good idea. Yeah. That's yeah, that's why, that's why we want this, uh, this message to, to get out there. Many people, they don't know that they can reply to the census online. So please use that tool. It's there for you, Espe specifically now at this moment, is really, really beneficial for you to respond to the census. You go to mycensus2020.gov and you respond. It's just going to take you 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Or if not, if you don't feel comfortable with that, then call us and we are going to help you to fill out the census questionnaire. Yeah. Okay, I have a question in reference to participation. We have in California, and I can speak to Los Angeles because that's where I live, a high percentage of homeless people. Mm -hmm. Granted that since COVID, uh, several of these people are being uh, held, are living, residing in hotels, motels, whatever, or shelters. So considering that we have a responsibility to mankind to, to help them, um, and it'll be providing health care and food or whatever, shelter, whatever. How, how is the Census Bureau addressing and working with the, the city or the state in reference to addressing, the, getting the information for the homeless? Like these people need to be counted. So the Census count is a huge task. I, would I think know it is. Census the, the census campaign started in 2011. As soon as census 2010 ended, we started mm -hmm. planning for this one. So mm -hmm. in the case of homeless, and I would like to say that, I call it that like uh, the golden question because I, and it's, it's amazing to see how community members care for others. That's a question that we get all the time in our presentation. So we're going to be counting homeless. We're going to be counting homeless people. And yes, we're going to be counting homeless people. We work, um, um, pretty tight, I don't know how to say that. We, go, we, we work closely with those organizations that provide services Good. to homeless, with the mm -hmm. soup kitchens, with the shelters, churches, uh, churches, all, all places. And yeah. on top of that, mm -hmm. part of our numerators, part of those numerators that are going to be out knocking on doors, those are going to be going out in September, in this year, it's going to be September from the 22 to the 24 to count of homeless. So they are going to be going, and we are going to be working closely with the with some police departments because sometimes we have to go to canyons because there are homeless that they go and they sleep in canyons and they sleep in uh, in certain parts. And sometimes there are people that they may have some kind of uh, mental issues. So, but we are going to so apart from working with those organizations that have uh, uh, the count of the homeless, right? We are going also send numerators to the field, and we are going to be counting them as well. So we are going to take care, especially because also in Los Angeles is a huge population of homeless, also in San Diego, it's huge. But we need to make sure that they are counted because they need also resources for their shelters, for the food that they receive, for all the services that they, that they need. So right. we want to make sure that we are going to be counting them as well. 
Yep. And I think that's a huge task. Oh my God. Yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah. Yeah. And then of course, you know, you don't have even have to people say, Oh, you what if you double count? That's okay. You'll never get capture everybody when it comes to the homeless population. You know, yeah. you know, you'll yeah. never capture it. Even if you double count, so to speak, it's still not correct in regards to the accurate results of how many. Um, for the double account, we have an operation that is after the census is done, so the census is going to be done October 31st, we have a three month period. That window is going to be called the quality control operation in which we take care of those uh, double account. Okay. Of the okay. Double account because before starting the census, we uh, um, get uh, information for state, government and local. Uh, agencies, though. so they have kind of the idea like uh, the, the amount of people that are living, and we need to construct all of that information. So we say, if you are not sure, it's better that you double count that you on the count because we can get right. better the double counted, but we can right. feel, we can make make up a number, mm -hmm. you know. So that's yes. what we say. Um, so is, it, is the equation exact? I mean, is it do they go exact or do they have a built-in system? For in you know, other words, if they've if they've said this, this is a hundred people here based upon the census, and knowing that's not perfect, do they have a built-in system to say add ten percent or add five percent? Do they do that or they go exactly? Yeah, there is, the is a margin that they know the census has never been error. Yeah, there is right. a margin of error. Yes, of okay. course they have it. They have it because yes, we have yes. never in the history of the census we have never been able to count everyone. Yeah, because people in the so, hospital, you may not capture them, they're in transit, they're in yeah. another state, whatever, okay. But well, well, we, we try to reach the most that we can. The yeah. most and I have a question about kind of a new population. Um, it's probably not very large, but I think it's new and growing, which is... Um, they're they're transit and they're not homeless they are employed uh -huh. they you know what have you but they don't necessarily live anywhere um you know i, I know a, a number of of millennials you know that maybe they were working at tech companies and they didn't even bother to have a home because they lived at the company or they lived in their car you know or ha you know what have you um i know some young people that work in the gig economy you know where they're just they're driving for uber and they're doing food delivery and so forth and they live in airbnbs or yeah. you know it's they don't really have an address mm -hmm. or they have a p.o box you know so yeah. is there is there some way and i think that's going to grow i think we're going to see that population grow over the years you know because of financial hardship and so forth but um, do you, is there a is there a way of counting those folks or or do you see that as a new demographic that's somewhat challenging? Well, we are going to be counting all of those people that are living in RV, in motel, in hotels. We partner with all of those organizations. We um, we have this operation that is called also the group water operation, which uh, encloses people in prisons, people in uh, dorm. So sometimes they can uh, uh, participate in that kind of uh, question, that kind of concern. What I'm going to be counted is I am uh, seasonal workers, for example. Seasonal workers that they migrate. They stay six months in California, maybe they go to the north or snowbirds. Where I'm going to be counting them? So that's why we work so closely with the organization with trustee voices in the communities, they have to inform their clients, those people, the community residents, they serve like, hey, this is a census, and in that case, you should be counted when you spend more time. Mm -hmm. that, that's, mm -hmm. that's the uh, guideline that we follow. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, in the case of Snowbird, uh, people from Minnesota that go to Florida. Right. If you don't matter your mind that case, then since the benchmark for us in a normal situation, census day was April 1st. Mm -hmm. Where were you on April 1st? In the case of that student, that, that person, that worker that is in the gig economy, where were you on April 1st? Because you are not going to count like you were three weeks in Southern California and six weeks in North California. Mm -hmm. You don't remember where were you in April 1st? That's where you count yourself for the census. So I was in this community. That's where I should be. And then that's why you're going to uh, write it down in your form, in your census form. But yes, we are working with all of those big corporations that sometimes they have like a, this a small uh, parking lots and they have like a, those are big. Yeah. We work with all of them. We work with the hotels, motels, um, uh, boarding schools, senior homes. They let them know 
yeah. we, we, we need that information. We invite them to provide information to us and we uh, explain to them the benefits of an accurate account. Yeah. That's excellent. Yeah. Well, thank, thank goodness they didn't put that citizenship question on the census. I mean, I, yeah, or, I know. Yeah, oh. or, or question, add a citizenship, because I yeah. mean, you can, or a res, you know, are you here a permanent, what kind of a, you know, your immigration status. Yeah, you know? that was just. Would be, well, the, it, it would defeat the purpose. Exactly. Sure. Nobody. I mean, actually, what would happen, as uh, Isabel said, is it's that who, the, each city, state, whatever, or, or, or whatever, town would never have enough financial resources to provide the services that they'll need and they'll go bankrupt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's good that they're not being so specific and just, just counting each human being or each body, you know, versus um, being selective, because, you know, and say, oh, you, whatever, you know? Yeah. But, um, One of the work operations, when you were mm -hmm. mentioning about homeless, I was, uh, when we were recruiting for those uh, enumerators, yeah. Uh, we present to the uh, organizations that provide services to homeless, we say they can apply. If you have homeless people, we need them to apply to our recruiting opportunity, our job opportunity, because there is no one better than a homeless to know where to find another homeless. Mm -hmm. So we train them because they know where to go and find those others that sometimes they go to a shelter that may go maybe to sleep in certain kind yeah. of in San Diego, to, to sleep in set, certain part or in certain areas of the city. So we need, and we previously has been working with them and has been successful. So that's mm -hmm. why we recruit them and we need their participations to, to the census. And has been great, has been working uh, in previous censuses. So we hope we work for this one as well. How does the census tie into um, redistricting? Is that data used in terms of redistricting? Yes, it is used uh, for um, redistricting. You can see that uh, a district can change boundaries based on census information. So we normally, as I said previously, we once we finish and then we have that period to clean the data, we are going to submit that data to the president because that data is going to be used to count uh, congressional seats. And then a year later, in this case, it's going to be uh, just 20, uh, 21, 2021, that information is going to get to the state. Once information gets to the state, is when they, you will see it's a certain boundaries that's going to be maybe impacted or affected by the census count because the community maybe has been growing, you know, mm -hmm. um, or, or have maybe like in many cases in California that we have an excess of people, then that community has been reducing and that's going to be affected as well. Mm -hmm. um, something I, I wanted to point out is like uh, we have this binational uh, initiative in which we work uh, closely with uh, the embassies because, you know, United States is a melting pot. We have so many communities from so many countries here. So we work with the embassies, with the consulates to let them know. We have the cases, in, in my case in San Diego, we have the, the border, is Tijuana. So we have many people that they live in Tijuana, but they work here. Should, should we be counting them? That's the golden question as well. Should we be counting them? And yes, we should be counting them because they spend much time here because also they pay taxes here. Most of the time, those children, they, are, they live in Tijuana, but they come here to school. If we have like a school by the border in San Isidro, for example, and we have 2% of those children that don't uh, participate in the census, that's going to affect the funds that the school is going to receive from the federal government. Mm -hmm. So they have to participate here as well. So we have different communities. We have, for example, Filipinos. They spend six months in the Philippines and then they spend six months here. Should they be aware of the census? Should they participate in the census? Yes, because most of the time they come here and they use resources here. They should be also counting as well. Mm -hmm. So that's important. We have been working with all of the um, representatives of different communities to let them know like, hey, this all of the, we need to count everyone. Mm -hmm. They're going to be counting soldiers that are deployed. Yeah. going to be counting them as well right so it's like a huge and big operation right. going on. Right. i think you mentioned the snowbirds how do they and you know florida has a lot, lot of those <laughs> from new york and stuff. so how I, I i don't know if i heard how how do they count those people that say move from new york and go to florida for in the winter how the guideline we use in those cases is um 
they should be counted where they spend more time. Is they dominate the mind, and that also fits for children with split custody. I am in charge also to work with children on the five. And sometimes, what about that child that the mom and dad they are separated, and the child has double custody, and the child spend one week with the mom and another week with the child? Who should be census that that, that child? So you can measure your mind. The child should be counting where he or she spend more time. The same for the snowbird. Is they can measure their mind? Where are they on April 1st? April 1st is where they should be counted in. Oh, it makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you used a date so people can kind of just focus yeah. on that. <laughs> if, you know, and say, okay, this is where I am. So this, yeah. yeah. Or it can really get confusing. Right. How long have you been doing this now with the census? I joined the census in September. You're doing a remarkable job. You're so resourceful. Oh, I'm impressed. Thank you so much. I am so impressed with your with the information you've shared. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean thank you. you thank you so much. I feel like yeah, I was amazed when there's so much behind because you you think, okay, it's just about maybe filling up the questionnaire, but when you see what is behind all of that right uh, how that information is going to be used uh, later and it has my personal uh, experience as i said um, before joining the census i have this uh, online project it was a service that was uh, targeted hispanic community in the united states including hawaii so i has to i was i didn't grow up here so i was first based in phoenix arizona a place that is always in my heart and then uh, I was researching, my service is going to be online, so I'm not limited to Phoenix, Arizona, but what are those states that uh, have the biggest Hispanic community? Mm -hmm. you know? And that is something that I encourage business to use. Sometimes we think like uh, all my information may be in Facebook, Facebook has this amazing uh, marketing tool where I can uh, target my demographic, but I think it helps if you use an external sources and then you compare. So I went to the census. I researched where are the biggest his, uh, Hispanic groups in the United States. Okay, now I focus those states. In those states, in which cities, from mm -hmm. in from those that are Hispanic, which ones are foreign born? There is no better information. That the census is going to give you that. I don't think Facebook can give you that mm -hmm. because it's not the same when I address my marketing to the ones that are foreign born, mm -hmm. that the ones that are born here in the country. So. And I, that was information that was there. And that was a, a, a marvelous tool. I remember that when once in Phoenix, I moved to California and the majority of my, uh, of the students I was serving, they were based on Texas. I was even thinking, I should move to Texas maybe <laughs> because that, that is what is my niche. That's what is, that's what is the, the highest demand, you know? So all of that thing, and that I was able to find that to, to make like a more customized uh, marketing strategy because I did that study before and that information was provided on the census. Where do you, how does one access that data? Um, there are different, let me see if I can see here. The census has, you go census.gov. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can see. Can you see me there? And yeah. then, uh, if you're going to address your business for women, you can, do, you can go there as well. Oh, good. I, I need go to hear to that. Go uh -huh. and then there is a menu that says explore data. Yeah. And yeah, you can share your screen, Isabel, if you want. Oh, okay. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, Let me. Okay. Thank you so much. Wait, I'm looking for... <laughs> Take your time. Okay, and then, so, share a screen. Is the first time I'm going to share my screen through... Yeah, I, I don't know how to, do, I've, I've never done it, I have to start. Let me know if you see it. Not yet, let me see. I gotta get savvy with that too. I've got, that's my big project moving forward now. <laughs> no, I, I don't see it, but I, I gave you, know. yeah. Well, I'm trying to, but I don't know. I, I don't get it. Okay. <laughs> well, just give us the, yeah, just give us so the I can send you the yeah. link, but it's quite uh, approachable. So if you go to census.gov, there is a menu on the top that mm -hmm. says uh, explore data. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
and you can even look rows by topic and then you can see age and sex business and economy education for example for businesses oh patty you were mentioned something or no elizabeth elizabeth was mentioned uh, the one of the services what they provided they went to the census and they looked for the information oh, yeah. Yeah. and i want and you saw information about income right so this is uh the census conducts two uh biggest uh, census it's like the, the american community survey in the, the american community survey that happens every year we collect information about income in this decennial census that happened every 10 years, that is the one that is happening now, we do not collect information about income. Right, but there the is another Because uh, in the American Community Survey, some households oh, are selected okay. randomly, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's a survey that yeah. we are conducting. Sometimes people are confused and is there participating in the American Community Survey, they say, oh, no, no, I already respond to the census. No, that was the American Community Survey when we mm -hmm. collect that information about uh, income, all the other things that we don't ask in the decennial census. Mm -hmm. That's another difference that is important to know. Which is good because it gives it the, the people a little more comfort zone to not have to let people the census know their income. It's so, it's really, you know, and people I, are so sensitive and some, some, some are so paranoid right now mm -hmm. with all that's going on. So I can understand that you know, it's good that it's not too, yeah. too threatening, if you will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, for businesses as well, one more time, uh, when corporations, they want to know what is that skill force? They're going to place a headquarter in which city? What is the skill force that I need for that, uh, for my, my, this specific sector? They go to the census. That's why it's so important for businesses to participate in the census as well. Mm -hmm. Apart from the grants that they may get for the federal funds that be allocated to, to businesses, uh, it's also because for their uh, development, for their growing, the census is offering all of that information. If you want to direct your information, uh, the other day they released information about uh, seniors, right? One of the, and then like, this is really important. There has been a study the, uh, how seniors have been impacted, how senior homes are not uh, adapted to senior needs. So they conduct all of that, uh, all of that research and they, they, you know, there is a market here because senior homes, they don't have, uh, they have stairs, and they give you a statistic how many accidents comes in seniors for the stairs. They should be having uh, the other ramps. The ramps. Thank you so much. <laughs> they should be having ramps. And they give you a statistic. What are the needs in that demographic? Okay. They, give, they give you a statistic. The senior homes that doesn't have the shower or the bathroom adapted to senior needs. So they have. Sorry. I was a balloon. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> they give you the, the, <laughs> my God! <laughs> I'm not saying so. All the information as a business, if you are a business or you're planning on growing, the information is there. They have like a, the census has uh, also in that website census.gov. You can see their library where they conduct um, economic uh, census and all of the states, mm -hmm. and they let you know. Well, farmers, for example, for farmers, what kind of uh, the farmers where they are, what kind of crop they grow in this certain area, who are uh, the task for in those area. So it's really valuable information that we can find there. Right. Yep. Wow. Well, this is this, uh, this has been amazing to me. <laughs> I mean, I, I I just didn't. You know, you have certain assumptions about the census, I guess, and. Um, and I knew the data was used for, you know, for something. It wasn't just, you know, being asked for for nothing. But, um, you know, just some of the stats that you've shared and the number of federally funded programs and, and services, you know, and why it's so important to know, you know, if you've only got five people, you know, that respond and yet there's 50 people who use that service, now it's going to be woefully underfunded, you know, and, and I would hope that this data is used, uh, you know, by our legislators when they're making decisions about what to fund and what not to fund and so forth. So at least yeah, I'm that's why we ask, some people, they ask, what do you ask about race? What do you ask about, about ethnicity? What do you ask about the language? And then because that information is going to use later for those programs. So if we have like a certain community that has been migrated. Uh, to certain area and they speak any specific language, 
So I, that information, I, I need it to, to know if I can provide more translator services, is I'm going to have a more uh, publicity or ad or promotion in that specific language. That's important to know. So right. to, uh, for the health care uh, sector, we work with health organizations and they are really glad that we collect that information because when they do their research and they provide services, there is not the same kind of, uh, I was related to one of those programs before joining the census, and there is not the kind of uh, medicine that I'm going to provide to someone that is of a certain race, is not going to, to work in another race the same. We had that issue with people that have high blood pressure, right? The person that is a uh, white race, they, they can have some kind of medicine that works marvelous on them, that doesn't have the same effect in a person that is from the black race. That's and that true. information, that is really important. Sometimes we don't know. Mm -hmm. And then yes, all of that information is there. And for example, with this uh, crisis with the pandemic, when they decided to allocate emergency funds to the ventilators, they went to the census. They went to see where are the seniors community that are the community that is going to be more sensible to this pandemic. They need to locate them, to allocate funds for those communities. They need to plan ahead of time to say, okay, we have seniors, but what kind of seniors do we have? We have seniors that are Filipinos, we have seniors that are Tagalog, we have seniors that speak Spanish. So where are they located? In right. which area? So to plan what resources they are going to be sending. Also, have happened with emergency, with natural catastrophes, right? Mm -hmm. For hurricane, for storms, when the government decide to allocate those emergency funds, they go to the census first. Everything around us is always census. Did you see the street that is has been built? Has been built based on census. The, the school, the grocery, everything comes out of census as a statistic. You know, it's interesting you brought that up too, because even housing in regards to the community, you know, is important too. Because even, you know, I live in a in, a, in LA and I live in a um, it's a mixed neighborhood. Prime it was originally Jewish, an older neighborhood but it's very strategically located. And they're building, they're actually going to have Metro public transportation, the train, and it's actually two and a half blocks of my home, right? And we have like four hospitals in close proximity, Cedar sinai a Spine Hospital, Kaiser Hospital. I mean, it's just amazing, right? It's, and it's, it's easy to access. It's close to the Grove, it's close to Fairfax, it's very strategic. And I'm telling you, it's so important because it's becoming more and more dense. And that part I don't like, actually, to be honest, because what they're doing is they're taking down the older homes, the single family homes and duplexes, and the developers are coming in and building high rises in certain areas. And even my community, we've actually licensed them for historic community, money, whatever, whatever, so that we don't lose the architecture because they're older homes, older Spanish homes. And so it's, I'm sure all of that thing with the census, that data is there with regards to population and density and, and how to address that as it relates to provision of services and housing. Housing is a huge challenge in LA right now. It's yeah. really getting overpopulated. And then of course the traffic, mm -hmm. it's just it's a domino effect. It's incredible. Yeah. So you, you may expect some changes in your community next year, yeah. and now you know why. Because the census data is going to be delivered to the uh, to the state next year. So yeah. you start notice, noticing some uh, changes, now yeah. you know, oh, now I know what's behind it. It's because of the census. And before yeah. finishing, I would like to, uh, to repeat that we are uh, in, as a way to to encourage census participation, we have give away uh, promotional items. Uh, any other organizations or you are related to advocacy groups and you would like um, those prom promotional items to be uh, shipped to you, we can do that. We do as a way to encourage census participation. Uh, we have different items. We have um, water bottles, we have total bags, uh, pins, uh, church funds, we have faucets, and uh, draw string bags. So we have different things that we will be glad to share with you. And we have also flyers that you can share in your community or that you can share in your social network if you are using your social network because the census are also being impacted. We were ready to do our biggest outreach event in March. <laughs> when all of a sudden we say, 
It has to be at home. Yeah. So my, my house looks like I just, I'm ready to move. I'm not going to move so far, uh, but it's because it's full of uh, boxes, because all of the boxes were shipped to me with yeah. all of those materials and all of those flyers that we were supposed to be uh, sharing with the community to encourage census participation. Yeah. So I have a quick question, because I mentioned to you that Alpha Kappa Alpha, my sorority is working on getting very involved in this to contribute to, and help and support it and encourage people to, to, to um, fill out the forms, etc. Is there a, is, do you have the name of a person that's kind of your equivalent in LA? Is there somebody that, that you as like a counterpart, somebody similar that we oh, can yes. work with? I so, can share it with you. We have different specialists in LA. We have, right. different, we have a team. I'll tell you what, I, let me have your phone number and then I'll text you and you can text me back. And that's, I can get the name of the person that's equivalent and the phone number so that I can work with my, I'm not in charge of the project. I'm one of the people on the committee. And then we can kind of connect with that person because, and you know, anything that would encourage people to, to fill it out. And I, I don't know, uh, we just Great. had a meeting and I missed the first meeting. So what's your phone number? My phone number is 808. 808. 892 892 9304 9304 okay mm -hmm. so later on I'll text you and what I, I'll ask you for the name of a contact in Los Angeles that we can contact and we can work with equivalent to you that we can kind of see how we can print help that that is great thank you so much You're thank welcome. you so much well, Isabel, thank you so much for all of this information. I mean, this, is, this has really, really been fascinating. And I thank you for having all of this data and, and information right at your fingertips. You know, you can sure tell that you are immersed in the census, you know, right now. So um, again, I thank you for spending your valuable time with us and sharing your expertise and your knowledge with us. And for those of you that are listening um, online to this or, or listening to the replay after, make sure that you you know, reply to your senses, make sure you fill it out. Now that you know how important it is and how, how it's used, how that information is used, make sure that you um, apply and fill out your census. So thanks everybody for joining us. I appreciate everyone's time, appreciate this information and uh, make sure that you keep watching the Connected Women of Influence Facebook page, our LinkedIn page, um, and find out when our next events are coming up. And we will look forward to seeing all of you at a, a time in the future. Stay safe and, and be smart. <laughs> Bye now. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have a great weekend. Bye.